Hi, welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today we're going through some Am I the A-hole stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you like videos like this, you might like to join the membership down below because then you will get early access to every single video that I post. And if you choose the highest tier, which is $4.99, you'll also get a postcard from me. So, you know, there's that. Anyway, um, real quick, I want to talk about something that I've been meaning to talk about because y'all know that I'm real. I'm honest about what's going on with me. I'm honest about things that I'm going through. And I would just like to normalize postpartum hair loss. Do y'all want to see something? Watch this. Y'all see all these little hairs? You see me looking crazy? Yeah. That's all the hair that's now regrowing that I lost with my second side. No one warned me about this. No one told me to look out for this. I had no idea what was going on until I was about three months postpartum with my first. And I look in the mirror and I'm like, has my hairline always been that sparse? I mean, like I'm seeing like lots of scalp. Like I lose a lot, like right around my temple. Well, almost. And then, yeah, I lose, I lose along the hairline. I don't know if I've lost anywhere else because I wouldn't be able to see it, but I always lose right here. Anyway, I would just like to normalize that. If you are pregnant, if you just had a baby, if you'll be pregnant one day, just so you know, around the three month mark, you will notice hair loss. It's okay. It will grow back, obviously. You'll look like a fool for a couple months, but it's a small price to pay for your little baby bundle of joy. I'm bringing up postpartum pregnancy, hair loss, etc., because this video is chock full of pregnant stories. I don't know why, because I grab them randomly most of the time, but the first three that I came upon were all pregnant women. So if you're ready for this pregnant am I the a-hole video, I'm ready. Let's get right into it. This says, am I the a-hole for making my pregnant sister-in-law cry when she kept asking why I changed my name? I, okay. Part of me is like, yes, give pregnant women some grace because they're dealing with a lot of emotions, a lot of hormones, even just like not the internal stuff that's happening, but even the external stuff, like it's scary getting ready for a new baby. So, I mean, like you're scared about like taking care of them. You're scared about your other kids if you have them. You're scared about your pets if you have them. You're scared about money. Like there, there's a million things to be scared about, but there's a lie, okay? And I'm so sick of those people who think that pregnant people can just get away with bloody fucking murder because they're pregnant no i'm sorry you're still a grown-up and if you're not you shouldn't be having a kid get any kids but you are a grown-up so fucking act like it that's my opinion but let's see if the story can change it my brother 30 male is married to Haley, 29 female and they're expecting a baby together last year i 17 female officially changed my first name from evelyn to indy which was a nickname form of my original middle name my parents gave in after realizing how serious i was about being indy and how i was not warming up to or growing into Evelyn. My brother and Haley want an older slash vintage name for their baby and Haley asked me about five months ago why I disliked Evelyn enough to change the name. At the time she brought up how popular the name has become and how vintage is back. It's true. Evelyn is a really popular name and it was really popular back when my five-year-old was born too. I told her I didn't like vintage names and to me it sounded really old fashioned. I told her the popularity didn't influence my decision. She wanted to know my reason for disliking older names and why I liked something like Indy instead. I didn't mind her asking this first time. I mean, questions are questions, right? Like you're allowed to be curious about stuff. That's reasonable indie. She brought it up again a week later and she asked the same question and pressed me more for why. She asked a third and fourth time. I gave her the same answer and asked her why she kept asking me. I'm sorry y'all, my hair, the way it's waved today, the ends just kept sticking me in the neck. Like little, my hair is very healthy. So it's very strong but it felt like a little piece of straw just stabbing me. Okay, so I had to, I'm sorry. I was trying to leave it down for y'all to kind of look pretty, do my best, put a little effort, you know, keep the relationship healthy and alive between us, you know, keep the, keep the, keep the romance alive, but I just can't do it anymore. 
She asked a third and a fourth time. I gave her the same answer and asked her why she kept asking me. I told her my answer wasn't going to change. By the seventh time, she asked. She admitted she was worried her baby would hate having an older name and wanted to figure out what she could do to prevent what happened with me happening to her. Maybe you call your kid by their actual name. <laughs> I mean, if this this girl had grown up being called Evelyn, Ev, Evie, any of the above, maybe she would have grown into it, but you called her Indy her whole life. So obviously she wasn't gonna grow into Evelyn. Duh. She also said she'd like me to rethink my name because she thought Evelyn was beautiful and she was sad I had chosen something like Indy over it. Sorry, bitch, I missed the part where that was your goddamn business. I don't care if you have a bun in the oven, shut your mouth. I asked her to stop so many times already and I even asked my brother to stop her. He told me I needed to understand it was the hormones. No, you're being a nosy fucking bitch. Hormones doesn't make you, do, sorry, hormones don't make you annoying. Hormones don't make you a pushy, pushy pusher. Hormones don't make you an entitled bitch to information that's not yours. It makes you cry more. It makes you more dramatic about things, sure. But it doesn't just give you an extra personality trait, you dipshits. I can easily say she has asked me this more than 25 times by now. I'm not exaggerating that number either. I'm annoyed just reading this story, okay? Two weeks ago when she brought it up again, she felt like I had made a mistake changing my name and how 30 year old me wouldn't be so against Evelyn. I told her 30 year old me can deal with it if that happens. She told me I didn't really have a good reason to like the name and Indy seemed like the kind of name someone young likes, but not someone older. Then yesterday happened and I kind of lost my temper. She started out asking the same stuff and the baby is almost ready to be born. So I know it's coming to an end, but she asked me to really think about why and help her because she couldn't figure out what she'd do differently than my parents did. Then she said they really shouldn't have let me change my name so young. I snapped and I told her to stop asking me the same question because my answer won't change and her comments are not changing my mind because I don't like old-fashioned names. I told her I think they're awful and I'm sick and tired of hearing about how much better they are and having her try to make me find a reason she finds acceptable. I told her just like she hates Indy, I hate Evelyn and she needs to let it fucking go already. She burst into tears and my brother got so mad at me. My parents were like, why did I have to speak to her so harshly? Am I the a-hole? I'm trying to bring, I'm trying to bring the inner, inner peace to the outside. Okay, you are a dumb bitch, pregnant sister-in-law. It's not your fucking business. It's not your fucking name. It's not your fucking kid. It's not even really your fucking family you married here. So mind your goddamn business. Put your nose elsewhere and shut the fuck up and I don't care if you cry bitch I would have made you cry three weeks ago sorry not sorry I do not think I I, I know you are not the a-hole this bitch has been told 25 fucking times the answer and now okay see this is what happens with my son right I will be like I want you to do this I asked you to do this I told you to do this. Hello, are you listening? I asked you to do this. I said, because sometimes they don't listen unless you yell. I don't like to yell, but occasionally you need to raise your voice to be heard. Let's see what Reddit has to say. If you reacted like this the very first time she asked, then you'd be a bit of an a-hole. But after months of her asking you the same thing over and over and over, your reaction is justified. I hate the, you must understand it's the pregnancy hormones spiel. Being pregnant doesn't give you a free pass to be an asshole, not the a-hole. Thank you, final figure 7150, because I absolutely agree. OP responds and says, I was thinking the same. Like being anxious would be one thing, but pretty much fighting me over my own name for months is so weird. I know she wants me to change my answer, but I won't. I felt the same way for years. 
I mean, that makes perfect fucking sense to me. And I would just be like, if you don't want your pregnant wife to cry around me, then keep her away from me. Because every time she comes near me with that bullshit about my name, I'm gonna make her cry again. So if you don't wanna be wiping snot off your shirt, I suggest you tell her to shut the fuck up and stay away from me. And yes, I'm being spicy again. Ooh, I'm so mean. Anyway, I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next pregnancy story. This says, am I the a-hole for asking my pregnant wife to leave our home after she faked breaking up with me just to get a reaction out of me? I think I was too harsh. Uh, why are we playing mind games, A, if we're grownups? Why are we playing mind games if we have a fucking baby in the picture? So I'm gonna tentatively, tentatively say, not the a-hole, but let's see what the story says. So my wife and I have been together for three years and she's currently pregnant with our first child. For some context, I'm a surgeon and have always had long hours. This has been a known part of my life since before we started dating. Recently, she's been asking me to leave my job to do something with better hours, like private practice, because she said we need more time together. While I totally understand her perspective, being a surgeon it is what I've worked my entire life for, and my long hours are just a part of that. I can't just flip a switch and move into clinic work. It's not that simple, and it's not what I trained for. I mean, yeah, if you did all the schooling and shit to be a surgeon, you are not just gonna give that up because your girl wants to spend more time with you. That was a that was kind of a life commitment you made. And y'all married? Yeah. When she married you, she should have accepted that. Like, like, like when I when I married my husband, I mean, you know, we had been together for a lot longer than three years. We actually got married on our 11 year anniversary, but I knew that he was a restaurant manager. I knew that he would be a restaurant manager for years. And that, yeah, sure, maybe one day he would be a district manager and he could work more daytime hours than nighttime hours. But I was fully prepared to deal with a man who worked nighttime hours because I knew he was a restaurant manager. Stupid. Anyway, the other day out of the blue, she says she doesn't want to be in this marriage anymore because of the issues we've been having. Mainly, she wants more of my time, which as I said, isn't possible given my career. When she told me she wanted out, I just said, okay. I told her that I appreciate her being honest and that if she truly feels like she can't be happy with me, I understand. I'm a secure person and if she's not happy, I'm not going to convince her to stay with me just for the sake of staying together. She seemed surprised by my reaction and asked why I wasn't fighting for our marriage or trying to fix things. I told her that if I did, it would feel like I'm begging her to stay and that's not what I want. If she's unhappy, she doesn't owe me a reason to leave. The point is that she doesn't want to be with me and that's enough. I mean, it's a little cold. It's a little cold. But I mean, you're right. I oh well, see, like I I would beg my husband to stay. I wouldn't want him to stay if he wasn't happy, but I would want to find out why he wasn't happy and try to make him happy if I could. Like, of course, if he's like, oh, I'm in love with someone else, like, yeah, like I'm not gonna be able to change that. But if he's like, um, you work too much and I feel like you're not giving enough attention to our relationship. Oh, hey, that's something I can work on. Like, let me know. I will take notes and I will do my best to make things work between us. Him being like, okay, bye. I guess I can't do anything about your decision. Like, he didn't even ask why. Yeah, a little bit of an a-hole, but she's also an a-hole, so. So far y'all are O for O. This seemed to frustrate her even more. She said something like, so you'd rather walk away than work on the reasons why I'm unhappy? I told her it's not that. I would have been happy to have her conversation about making things work realistically, but she already decided she wanted out and I firmly told her that I wasn't going to be in a situation with my partner where they expected me to beg or grovel for their love. I respect myself too much for that. I mean, that's fair. She didn't come to you and say, hey, I have an issue. I'm feeling like things aren't working. She just said, I'm not happy and I'm leaving. So she had already made the decision and you being sort of a cold person, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but especially men, I feel like the male surgeons have to have a touch of coldness to them, a touch of removal from humanity to be, not a removal from humanity, a removal from like empathy. And, and 
maybe, maybe I'm going about this wrong. They're so clinical and they're so logical and they're so straightforward, clear cut, black and white, you know, red switch or blue switch, vein or artery. And, and, and I think to be a good surgeon, maybe you have to be like that, but I'm not sure that makes the best partner in all situations. But she really tried to play you, so there's that. She started crying and confessed that this whole thing wasn't real, that she was just testing me. She wanted to see how I would react because she's been feeling neglected with me not being around enough, and she thought that breaking up would force me to address that. Did he just take on more cases or is this the way things have always been and you decided to pitch a fit about it now? First question. Second question, you don't break up with your husband, dumbass. You divorce him. That takes lawyers, that takes time, that takes money, that takes resources, that takes effort, that takes fucking hardship and court dates. You don't just break up. You don't just say, I'm done and walk out the door. Like that's, ma'am. That is not how this works. By that point, I'd already changed my mind. I told her I can't be with someone who would casually say they want to end our marriage just to get a reaction out of me. If she's willing to throw around the idea of breaking up so easily to make a point, that's a huge red flag for me, as it should be. I told her I deserve a relationship built on mutual respect and commitment, and this isn't it. Now I've decided to leave. I've asked her to move to her parents' place since the house is mine. She's pregnant and I know this complicates things, but after what she did, I don't feel like this marriage is salvageable. Okay, but you said you thought you were too harsh in the title, so which is it? Because not salvageable are such serious, you know, like definitive, like that's it words. Um... It's definitely not gonna work if y'all don't go to therapy. Like, come on, give therapy a try. She's pregnant with your child and y'all are married. You're really just gonna be like, she played a prank on me and I didn't like it. So now we're done. No, however, was it a harmless prank? No, it was a fucked up prank. And I would be really pissed at her and I probably would tell her to move out for a little while until we could get into therapy and we could talk about it and we could work on it because that was fucked up and she should not be allowed to do that shit. It's not okay. She should not just get a free pass. Everybody sucks here. Let's see what Reddit has to say. Here's my take. First, not the a-hole. I hate this kind of garbage ultimatum behavior. It's childish. I understand why you reacted the way you did. However, I believe what your wife wants is to feel like a priority. I'm not in your marriage, but feeling like a priority doesn't necessarily mean changing your work or life. When you are with your wife, how do you two interact? Are you present? Do you take the time? Do, do you try to take some of the burden of planning things to do together, of making her feel special, okay? Does she do things for you that you don't acknowledge and take for granted? Are you vulnerable with her? And do you tell her that the hours you put in are for both of you? Yes, fulfillment for you in your career, but also to build a life that hopefully will be quite comfortable with you being a surgeon. I don't think one childish episode from your wife who is pregnant and perhaps has a lot of hormones messing with her is a sufficient reason to give up and walk away if you truly love her. I believe you need to sit down with a good counselor to help get to the heart of what your wife actually wants. If she truly is demanding a career change to private practice, then you can walk away and co-parent your child. But if what she wants is to feel like she is as important to you as your work, then I think you could make some small changes that you could really alleviate that. That's my take, a random Redditor who often has to tell my husband that I would like more of his attention. It's not about a number of hours or days. I just wanna feel like I'm still his priority when we do have time together. I mean, I think that's fair. I do think she was being very childish. I think that hormones could have possibly played a small role in this, but you also have to already be a really immature person to pull something like that. We have one more comment that I saved. I work in healthcare and have seen firsthand how this stuff plays out. You either get the surgeon who, when they are home, gives 100% of their time to their spouses and family, but it's never enough for the spouse, or you get the surgeon who, when they are home, still acts like they're God and makes no effort because they do what they do is so dang important, they should 
should be catered to and groveled upon just for bracing with you in their presence. Can't really tell which group he falls into. It's always sad to me that 95% of the surgeons have that one scrub nurse who knows them inside out while their wives really don't know them at all. I've always asked the surgeons why even get married when you're married to the job and really can't dedicate the time to a spouse who has needs and none of them have ever given me a solid answer other than I don't know or I never really thought about that. It's because they're so clinical. They have no feelings or at least no, it's not that they don't have feelings, but the feelings are so suppressed and the logic and rigidity is up on top. And so they're like, wait, I have feelings down in there somewhere. Yes, Marshall, you do. Anyway, I think you're both the a-holes. I think you need some serious counseling. I think I wouldn't walk away from a marriage over one blunder like this. However, it is serious enough that it needs to be addressed before the relationship can continue. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says, am I the a-hole for telling my pregnant sister to stop complaining about the consequences of her poor life choices? Yikes and ouch. Let's see what the story says. Me, 29 female, my sister, 28 female, is only 18 months younger than me. I met my now husband many years ago and have a two-year-old and I'm currently pregnant. Meanwhile, my sister met her now husband only a little under two years ago. Okay, but like, they're almost 30, so you don't need as much time as you do when you're a kid because you're not changing as much. Everything in their relationship has been rushed. They got engaged after a few months, bought the first house they found together, moved up the wedding at my parents' expense, and then she got pregnant three months before the wedding, so they had to move it up again. Different life paths, fine, but I can't help but feel a little weird about it. She's never happy for me with my milestones, doesn't seem to want to get to know my daughter, and only talks about her milestones. Anytime I hit a milestone, she's like upset she hasn't done it yet and rushes to do it. It's not like she's jealous exactly, it's not meanly, but she clearly can't stand the idea of not having something right now. She's now six months pregnant, we are due two months apart, and won't stop complaining. Every time I talk to her, it's complaints about how the house is run down, how it isn't fair, they have to settle because of the market, how her husband is gone so much, she has to fly often for work, how she doesn't know what she'll do for childcare, etc. These are all reasonable complaints on their own, but they just grate on me when she says them. I feel like if she hadn't rushed and had saved up, she might have a nicer house, or if she waited to get pregnant, her husband would have been able to get a job closer first. He's been looking, but no luck so far. I might be the a-hole. Okay, let me stop you here because no, this irritates me too. When people are like, I wanna get pregnant, I wanna get pregnant, I wanna get pregnant, and then they get pregnant and they're like, I don't know how I'm gonna afford childcare. I can't quit working, we need two incomes. What are we gonna do? I'm so stressed, I need help, please. Someone buy me a car seat. Why did you get pregnant then? It's not an accessory, it's not a Tamagotchi for those millennials and older. It's not a pet, it's not a house plant, it's a child. It needs lots of things, including attention, care, and time. And if you can't afford daycare and you can't afford to quit your job, then why did you have a baby? I just have zero sympathy for situations like that. So I guess I'm with the OP in that, in that regard at least. Anyways, I snapped and said, actions have consequences, so stop complaining about the consequences of yours. She lost it and was like, what are you even saying to me? How can you be so unsupportive? And then my mother called me upset and told me that we need to be supportive of family and they've supported me when I made choices I regret. The thing is, she isn't saying she regrets these choices or taking responsibility, she is just complaining. She takes a lot and doesn't say thank you or acknowledge what we do for her. I'm just fed up with it. But again, I know I could be wrong, so am I the a-hole? You know what? Spicy Heather says, nah, I hate those people who all they fucking do is complain. You wanted to be pregnant, now you're pregnant, why are you, like, you're, okay. Let me back up a second. You're allowed to want to get pregnant, get pregnant, and then complain about, like, pregnancy symptoms. Like, oh, I wanted to be so pregnant, but I didn't know I would be nauseous for six months. 
understandable. Oh, I wanted to be pregnant so bad, but I didn't know that it would make me so freaking tired. I couldn't even function. Understandable. All those things are understandable. But things that you could foresee, like childcare, like a rundown house, like money, that shit, you could foresee and you should have gotten pregnant. And now I don't want to hear your bitching. Again, with the job, you knew he worked out of town and you still bought a house, got married and had a baby. I don't have sympathy for this. You're a grown up. You're not 16 making dumbass decisions. You're almost 30 years old making big girl decisions and not wanting to put on your big girl pants and face the consequences. Maybe I'm a hard ass. Maybe I'm a bitch, but I say not the a-hole. Should you have said it that way? I mean, there's a limit, okay? There's a limit to patience, to good naturedness, to hospitality. There is a limit. And once you hit that limit, it's kind of like the gloves are off. I'm not saying like hit her, but I'm saying like tell her what's what. That's how I feel. Let's see what Reddit has to say. I'm confused. What choices do you feel she should regret and what exactly do you expect her to do about this now? Reading this, there seems to be a few issues that you're con conflating. One, she doesn't celebrate you. Two, she isn't interested in your daughter as you'd like her to be. Three, she is complaining to you about things in her life that she's struggling with. For the first two, it's hard for me to judge, but you don't have to be close with her if you don't want to be. For the third point, I think it would be more than reasonable for you to set a boundary where you say, look, you need to stop offloading on me. I've got my own stuff going on. You're allowed boundaries. However, it seems that you're instead focused on judging her for her choices and blaming her for things that I'm not convinced are her fault. Her husband being away for work would be hard. Childcare is difficult. I don't think she's an a-hole for being stressed. I'm leaning toward you are the a-hole because this post is very focused on where you've decided she didn't do things the right way. No, dum-dum. She said all she does is complain about all the choices she's made. So obviously she doesn't think she did things the right way because she's complaining about them. And if you made all these decisions and all you do is complain about them, it's kind of like you made this bed and I go quietly lie in it. I say you're not the a-hole. I would like to know what you all think about that one in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of over 375 Am I the a-hole videos up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.